Having looked at the form, how the shape is affected by function, the other key component in that central triangle uh, is material. Uh, and what we're going to do is to look at three basic types of material. Wood or woods, uh, metals and ceramics. Now, material studies is a vast subject. There are thousands and thousands of materials in each of those categories. So what we're going to do is just have a quick look at, at uh, uh, the most prevalent uh, of each of those types of material. And we're going to start with wood. Uh, and the key thing to remember about wood is how fast the tree from which the wood has come has grown. Some trees grow very fast and they end up with a much wider grain than the trees that grow very slowly, which gives you a very tight grain. Uh, and that tightness or breadth of grain uh, results in the hardness or softness or flexibility uh, of the woods concerned. Uh, and when woods are being chosen for an artefact, uh, they're chosen very specifically because they have certain characteristics of strength or flexibility or durability. Uh, and what we have here is a range of what we would classify as medium to hard woods. The soft woods like pine uh, are very rarely used for tools. Uh, they tend to be uh, as parts of furniture which don't get much uh, use in uh, uh, abrasion because they are so soft. Um, when you're looking at woods, it's very useful to have either a magnifying glass or even a jeweller's eyepiece. I prefer the eyeglass because it gives you a, a rather good circumstantial enlarged view of the grain. So starting with um, a wood that we take for granted all over the place with handles, we, uh, we'll look at ash. If you look very closely at the grain, it's quite tight, so it's, it has a degree of strength, um, but it's also very, very parallel. So it's, it, it's a long, thin structure to the grain, which means it's particularly good for long handles. It has a, a, a durability. Um, some uh, uh, people say the great thing about ash, it's got strength with length. And if you think about the uses to which uh, ash is put, that sort of sums it up quite well. Long pitchfork handles, etc., etc. Uh, the next wood along, which uh, is quite soft but has a, quite a, a tight structure, uh, is sycamore. Uh, and the great thing about sycamore is that it also doesn't taint. Uh, do, uh, doesn't impart a taste or a flavour. So sycamore is found a lot in uh, kitchen equipment and food uh, artefacts. Uh, this, for instance, is uh, an oat cake crusher, a bit like a rolling pin, but does the same sort of job, only breaks up thin, baked and dried oat cakes. Uh, and this is a, a, what's known as a cowl spoon in Welsh. Uh, both of them have got a, a really nice quite slightly mottled uh, quality uh, to them, which is characteristic of, the, of, the, of sycamore. Um, and a nice clean white feel. It's quite easily carved. It's very good for turning. A lot of turned artefacts, you get lovely sycamore bowls, um, which again have a nice clean edges to them. The next wood uh, is, a, is a wonderful all-purpose wood, really, uh, which is beech. Uh, and that's very distinguished by it has sort of slight small flecks in it. Uh, beech is, is found all over the place. It's used for handles of tools, it's used for furniture. It ha in this case, it's a stonemason's um, um, mallet. Um, you can see that actually it, <laughs> it does have the effect of notwithstanding a lot of heavy use. Um, in, in, certainly in terms of being struck, uh, but it's a, a, a very, very versatile wood uh, and found in a lot, of, a lot of tools. Moving on to the harder woods, we then have oak, which when it's cut is quite easily worked, but as it dries and gets older, it becomes harder and harder. Um, this is um, a serving mallet uh, used in, in rope work and sail work. 
um, and requires using that tool requires a, a large amount of strength, uh, both for the object and for the user. And so making this out of a, a hardwood like uh, like oak uh, is important. Um, and then the closest uh, and most varied grains you find are in um, either fruit woods uh, or woods such as box, which grows extremely uh, uh, slowly. And as a result, you have an extremely tight grain structure, which allows um, blocks to be cut. They're quite small uh, because the maximum girth of a, of a boxwood tree sometimes is only about six or seven inches. Uh, but they're perfect for creating wood engravings. And this is an unfinished wood engraving that would have been put into a, a shopping catalogue for trophies, I think. That would then be cut away, and then that would act as a, as a printing block uh, using, in a letterpress, printing context. Um, and then last but not least for the hardwoods, um, this is a plumber's mallet designed for uh, f straightening out kinks in sheet lead. Um, and that means that you wouldn't want a metal head, but you want a head that is quite durable as well as quite sort of kind to the metal. So as a result, you end up with a wooden head made of something called lignum vitae, which is a, an exotic wood, um, which was introduced into this country uh, in the 17th century. Uh, but it has this lovely two-tone colour, uh, and it's quite a heavy wood, uh, uh, but, uh, and a dense wood, and it would allow you to gently tap out uh, kinks in, in, in sheet lead without really indenting the lead or, at the same time, damaging the head. The other thing you've got to remember is that you get combinations of wood in artefacts, um, utilising their key... Uh, strengths or key advantages uh, to create a comp in a composite uh, artefact. The good example of an artefact that has uh, multiple woods within it uh, is the bog standard kitchen chair that you find in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Uh, I have an example here that in fact I've been sitting on. So what we have here, uh, we have the seat, which is made of elm. You can see that lovely wild pattern in the grain. Uh, again, you don't want to have a seat of a chair splitting on you, so it's, it's, it's very good at, at, and resilient for that. And then the rest of the structure here is made of beech. It could have been made uh, of oak if it was particularly strong uh, requirement. Um, and sometimes ash for the legs. Uh, but again, the key component, if you've got a chair coming in for identification, it's a country chair like this, chances are, unless it's some slightly exotic wood like you, it's going to be made out of elm. Uh, and then the rest of it could be either oak, ash or beech. Um, in terms of dealing with identifications, the same thing applies particularly to kitchen equipment. If bowls or other pieces of turned wood in a, in a kitchen or, or domestic context come in, or spoons, for instance, the chances are it's going to be made out of sycamore, maybe made out of beech, which also doesn't taint. And again, it imparts a degree of confidence in the inquirer and to some extent yourself, so at least you know what the wood is and you can take things from there.